Hey everybody, this is Matt. How are you guys doing? Uh, this is the world that I showed you in kind of a music video uh, about a week ago. And I just wanted to do a little bit more of an in-depth tour of this place because I, I thought that this place was pretty awesome. And um, I'm thinking that, you know, uh, I wanted to go a little bit more in-depth and show you guys what it was all about. So, in any case... Basically, what you saw was an almost completed version of my my little fortress here, and here it is. I've added a little bit more uh, here than uh, what used to be, and so I wanted to just kind of stroll around and give you, give, give you guys a tour here. Um, what you guys didn't see is I added a dock here, and also some like you know guards and stuff like that i did this uh i did this build on um creative mode and one of the reasons is because i, I didn't want to go over and rebuild stuff every time one of these little guys blew up and so you know obviously with this kind of like build you're not going to get really too practical if you want to light everything up in prison prevent things from like you know spawning and stuff like that so i've got a boat it's it's a really it's a kind of a small boat, but it's a boat, and it's basically meant to, like, you know, house soldiers uh, and stuff like that. You can see it's just basically a basic bolt, uh, boat, and if you go down here, you've got, like, you know, a couple beds and stuff like that. It's it's nothing special. It's still a work in progress, but um, it kind of fills out uh, basically what I had in mind for the place, which is basically a, a fully functional post. I guess uh, capable of doing you know like commerce as well as uh, uh, military stuff this is uh, a boathouse I guess it's where uh, people can stay I haven't actually added any beds to this but as you can see I did not actually I didn't act add any buttons here what, what's going on with that let's turn on the HUD for just a minute All right, here we go. Yeah, and so it made sense to make this fence around the, the dock and give a little bit of space for people to go in and out without totally sacrificing, you know, security and stuff like that. And this is the front gate of my place. Now, I wanted to go over some statistics because I'm a nerd like that, you know? Uh, this base can house well over 150 people, uh, including guards, soldiers, and diplomats, and also the occasional civilian. Um, it can actually do some commerce as well, uh, because there's a, a division between kind of like the, the troops that man the garrison. And also, like, there's also a section there where you can actually um, set up shop, sell things, or uh, drag in like raw materials for the garrison to use. So um, I just realized that I, I locked myself out. That's very silly, isn't it? But uh, no fear, I'm gonna show you how this front gate works because I think it's pretty cool and everything. Uh, this gate is not openable by a button by any means but as you can see I've got kind of like a, a network of uh, redstone things here um, its advantage is, the, is that you can automatically open and close these doors uh, to make things more secure but on the other hand on this other side you'll see that there's like only one door there and the reason is you don't want to expose this to the outside world so uh, I had to restrict the, uh, the doors here to only one per lane here and the way you open the door, of course, is you've got a lever down here. Right there. And to activate the doors, you just push the lever and there's a network of redstone uh, wires that basically allow you to, to open and close these doors automatically without actually going to an individual door. It's very basic stuff, I, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of you Minecraft experts have come up with something a little bit more fancy than that. But it works. And then, of course, 
if you need to open it automatically, you need to have a guard up here to basically make sure that what you're letting in is friendly. It's it's really I've thought about this way too much. And so we're, right now we're in the uh, I believe this is the eastern courtyard. Yeah, yeah, this is the eastern courtyard. That's west right there. The sun is about to set any moment now. And uh, to accommodate the front guards, I have this little guard shack here, of course. Got lots of beds and stuff like that. And also uh, along this courtyard is uh, kind of a little prison area for your little prisoners here. If you capture somebody who's not friendly or who's broken the law, you can like throw them the shack here. Now you can actually climb up here and you can see that there's these uh, iron doors that go to the main courtyard here. But because I don't want any escaped prisoners access to the main courtyard, you can see that there's no buttons here. So these doors are openable only by the other side here. And uh, it makes sense to me at, at least. Right here is a door that goes to uh, a place that I'll show you guys later. It's basically the barracks for the regular troops here. And here we have the main courtyard, kind of. These are the out outer uh, corridors of the main courtyard. And as you can see, these are the doors that I showed you. They go down to the prison cells right there. Um, as you can see, we have access out here, but not from, from back inside there. And then we can access the basically what I call the parade decks. There's basically two parade de decks here. And um, if you imagine like um, you're in a like military organization, and I'm not necessarily saying that this is like a, a modern organization, but uh, what I was uh, conceiving in my mind while I was doing was was basically a, 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 a maybe like a 1600s or 1700s garrison from like a, a col colonial Europe or something like that. And um, that is why we've got these little towers here. They're basically uh, cannon nests, I call them. Um, there used to be cannons in them, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I upgraded this thing to 1.8 and the weapons mod that I had for 1.8 didn't necessarily, it, it didn't support uh, the, um, the weapons mod and so I got rid of the cannons in favor of these banners and, and a little bit more decoration. At the front here is the uh, front defense structure. I call it the uh, superstructure, I guess. And we have yet another uh, automatic thing. This is basically a last minute defense. Um, if people are going on this deck and they're trying to invade you from the front, uh, uh, somebody managed to park a ship right there at the dock and they're letting uh, troops out. You can go to this little switch right here and then activate it. And as you can see, you've got automatic arrows firing everywhere. Or as much as you have. As you can see, I've got a lot of arrows. I am no danger in running out or anything like that. So that's the thing. Uh, you've also got the central tower here, which you can basically climb a ladder to go up here. I'm going to actually go uh, through one of the sides here because I think it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, basically, uh, you get to one of these side barracks here um, on the front towers through basically... I got lost here. What the heck? What the heck? All right. You can go up here and press the door here. And you've got this corridor that basically leads you to the left side of the front tower. But you can also access uh, it through these uh, staircases that I set up here. Um, and as you can see, there's a, a kind of a barrack structure right here that house... Uh, all the guards that go through these these four towers right here. This is the uh, southeast uh, superstructure, basically. So basically, all these guards right here that uh, sleep here and they actually relax here, you've got this little table that they can hang around and get information from their commanding officer or something like that. Um, you can look out here um, to the uh, parade decks, and you can do so. I, I, I added windows in here because obviously it wouldn't be so secure to have um, glass windows out here 
uh, you can basically look out to the prey deck and see what's going on down there. But from here, you can actually access uh, one of four uh, main things. These are basically leftovers from a previous iteration. The barracks I added were basically, um, they were afterthoughts. I was thinking, like, I really treat my guards like crap if I make them sleep out here. So if you need extra sleeping areas, I guess you can use these still, but uh, I, I, I wanted to build that little structure for them. And so you get up here and you can see a beautiful view of everything. You've got the ship over here. You've got that front gate that we just came in over here. Over here is another courtyard, which I'm going to get to. That's basically a civilian area where you can like set up shop and stuff like that. And then of course out there is all the bad guys, which you can kind of like, you know, you can basically kind of secure yourselves. Uh, one of these things, uh, all of these guys, all these towers have like the ender chests. And I thought of a really great use for this. And you'll see where this ties in uh, a little bit later in the tour. But also what we've got here is a little signaling uh, dis dispenser here. Um, great for visual communications. Um, if it explodes, let me see here. One more time, right? Okay, anyways, the concept is is that uh, you can do visual communication with the central command or any of your towers by saying, launch this and say, and, and people will know that you're signaling that maybe there's some trouble around this sector or everything like that. So that's like the communication sector that um, I set up here. I'm not going to go through all of these towers because pretty much when you've seen uh, one of these towers, you've seen them all. Um, it's one of the advantages of being kind of symmetrical here, but uh, the disadvantage is that you can't <laughs> you can't really show anything new once you've actually seen these things. So we're going to go back down here to the parade deck. And uh, if you remember, I showed you that central door that was in between the uh, prison deck. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, these doors that go to the prison deck, there's another set of doors right here that are kind of the same, but they do something a little bit different here. Uh, when you saw the music video, you'll recognize this. This is basically the mess hall. We've got ample seating for 24 here. And uh, this is, I, I've been in the military before, so this is my, my experience here, is that, that when you go to eat chow, right? You get into this big long line and then you just go wait, 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 and then you get to this guy. And um, originally this guy would take your social security number and then make you sign a piece of paper. And, and that's what it was. Um, nowadays they scan a barcode on, on the back of your ID card. I'm no longer in the military, but um, I, I decided to set it up, this up because it kind of made sense. I don't know what they did in the 1600s, but it kind of, kind of makes sense. Uh, we've got a jukebox here to entertain the, uh, the regular soldiers here. And then we've got a kitchen area. This, this is my, uh, my experience with restaurants, right? This is, uh, you've got your, your ovens uh, to mass cook things. You've got basically a, a big long preparation uh, area and also your sinks to wash your dishes and stuff like that. And anybody who's worked in a restaurant will recognize this. Welcome to hell, right? This is where all your raw meats and your vegetables and stuff are stored so you can like basically keep them fresh and not rotten and store them for you know cooking later and stuff like that. So that's this I've worked in a couple restaurants and this is one of the things that I remember is stepping into that thing as a cook. You step into that freezer to get stuff and it's not the funnest thing in the world but you I guess you get used to it right. So beyond here this is underground still is basically uh, the, the barracks area where most of the troops here. There, these, there's like 48 bunks here um, that everybody can sleep. This is, uh, you can kind of uh, think of this as maybe like uh, old fashioned barracks from like World War II. You've got the bunks and you've got your little foot lockers here and everything like that. And then um, these guys right here, uh, they're a little bit more nicer, I guess you, I could say that um, these are your sergeants, your non-commissioned officers that sleep here. 
uh, not much nicer, but uh, nicer in the fact that there's a little bit more space. Once again, the same thing here. And then beyond this little hallway here, we've got something that I like to call the, uh, the armory. And anybody who's been the, in the military will, will kind of recognize kind of the, um, the concept behind this. The, armor, the armorers reside in there and they hand you the weapons through the gates and you kind of like hang out here if you need to clean your weapons or you take them out. Uh, to the outside world, but I, I made it so um, you can only access this door through the inside and there's no actual physical passage here because there's a table there. You're basically just basically um, exchanging weapons and am am ammunition here and everything like that. Uh, yeah, so we'll go back up upstairs. Uh, oh, before I get to the upstairs, though, there's one last thing. There's a library because we want our, all our like soldiers and guards to be uh, intelligent. Uh, I did build this around a cave, so that's why you're hearing the little monsters here. So that's why that's it. But you got lots of books. You can read about, you know, literature and whatever they read about in the 16th century, you know, the fairy tales and stuff like that. Um, there's one more door uh, to the outside from from the main courtyard. Uh, so if you ever need a guest, uh, or if you ever have a guest, uh, I'm fully prepared for that. This is our guest house. It's kind of like a guard house, except you've got a little bit more amenities, less beds, more storage space. You've got the eating area right, right here, and then you've got your little kitchenette right here to kind of like have your guests be able to feed themselves. They also have kind of access way to this little courtyard that there's not more much use for this court, courtyard except for maybe you want to play soccer. I don't know why you play football on this. It's like the worst field ever, but it's it's kind of outside and it's, you know, you can get a little bit of fresh air here and everything like that. Oh. We've got guards, these guys, uh, I gotta tell you that I set up those uh, 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 a merchant area, and I put shopkeepers in. Shopkeepers meaning uh, the uh, villagers and everything like that. And these guys just went crazy. They I put the shopkeepers in there, and all they wanted to do is go that way. They like I was like you know watch your lane, dude. But they wanted to go that way because they love the villagers and stuff like that. This is the inner courtyard, and it goes around. Uh, the command structure. This is the command structure. And the command structure is basically where you've got some special troops that kind of do the bidding of the commander, the direct bidding of the commander. Uh, you've got, you know, a lieutenant, and you've got an uh, executive officer kind of doing, uh, uh, you know, making, helping you make decisions. And so this goes bottom to top. This is basically 12 additional soldiers that are the best and the brightest of this garrison. Once again, you've got sergeants here that have slightly more my, uh, nicer accommodations than the troops, not much more. And then you've got like, you know, storage space above so you can store, uh, you know, equipment uh, like, you know, sleeping bags, tents. Uh, you've got basically, you know, your electronics other than stuff. This is a central planning room. You've got, you know, your tactical maps here. Uh, you've got clocks to tell you what time of day it is because obviously these windows here are looking straight at a brick wall so you can't really tell what's going on here this is basically um i like to call it the sergeant major's room and he's an old guy because he's a sergeant major he spent like 20 years in the service and this is the butter bar the the exo the lieutenant He's a little bit younger than the sergeant major. Then up here you've got like kind of like a, a deck where you can kind of look at, overlook the parade decks and uh, you can tell your soldier stuff. You can make little speeches like, my fellow soldiers, we are gathered there today to go fishing. Fishing for big fish. And this is basically the commander's quarters. The uh, com 
command, uh, commander in chief. It's basically like you know, like a captain or something like that. Again, this is not royalty stuff, but he's the head honcho of the garrison, so he gets the nicest accommodations here, uh, including like the biggest bed, a couch, and like a chair. He's got also a little bit of a kitchenette here and a refrigerator. Uh, work with me here. It's a refrigerator and some storage. And then all, his all, also he's got his own little you know seating area that he can like, eat his dinner with his friends and uh, maybe the XO if he likes. And then up here you've got uh, some more storage space where you can hide all the valuables and like secret codes that uh, the XOs and the, the commanders have like privy to and stuff like that. Oh, this is a long video. Uh, I'm trying to keep this down, maybe, uh, but uh, I, I mean, I'm not objected to a long video. The only thing is my hard drive space is a little bit taxed right now. So I'm kind of, if, if I go over it, it's, it's no problem. I'll just kind of like, you know, do, do whatever with it. Anyways, okay, so this is, um, that was the exit area to the aft section of the garrison. Uh, and basically you have two different sections here. Uh, the top section right here that these stairs go up to are, are basically uh, more, more guard towers, which I can kind of show you. Um, and then down here is the civilian area where civilians kind of move in raw materials. As you can see, I have a lot of wood, a lot of logs that uh, are able to be stored in these big, huge cavernous areas at the bottom of the garrison. Um, uh, once again, you've got uh, kind of a walkway through the uh, western courtyard here. That's, uh, the, uh, that's where the, uh, the guest house goes to. You've got these uh, storage areas. This is, uh, these are battering rams, I guess. And then you've got some pigs there and everything like that. I couldn't think of anything to store. It's so uncreative. You got hay here for your, your mushroom cows. And then I think you've seen this place. I, I, I did a long panning view of this uh, with the music video, but you've got your horse stalls and everything like that. Uh, you can store a lot of horses here. And of course, if you have a lot of horses, you definitely need a lot of hay. So this is where the hay is basically being stored. These storage areas are actually part of a bigger structure here where at the top of this is basically the guard towers on, on the northern end of the facility here. Uh, so you go down here, and this is basically the uh, what I like to call the Eastern Courtyard. And these are basically the shops that I set up. Originally, like I said, I had set up villagers into these shops. Unfortunately, the, uh, the golems that really love the villagers decided they all wanted to be near the villagers, even though they couldn't. So I had to take them out. I basically killed them. It was, it was really bad. And as you can see, there are two more shops here. And then uh, one more thing about, well, there's a couple more things actually. You've got uh, right here, right just after the command structure and the wall that, that's on the central uh, courtyard, you've got the uh, blacksmith. You know, he's got his big old fire right here and he can like uh, put the anvil in and everything. He can put the sword in the water and make, uh, making it, uh, uh, you know, cooler and, and more more brittle and stuff like that. Uh, so back here is basically the tunnel way that goes to a place that I kind of showed you before, but it was on the other side of the uh, the, the iron doors. And this is basically the the other side of the armory. You've got your sets of armor right here, uh, and you've got your work table right here. You've got uh, you know cleaning solutions here in the in the, in the cauldrons. And this is, uh, okay, so you remember the guard tower that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And uh, basically the guard tower um, had these, um, the ender chests. And this is the, under, uh, this is the other end of that system where the armorer can basically shuffle weapons and uh, cannonballs to the towers. So they have like a constant stream of ammunition and it's a little bit more efficient than hauling the cannonballs up onto the towers. So... <clears throat> Really, this garrison is kind of like um, a mix between my experiences 
in restaurant business and military and then like you know maybe some historical perspective and then also like taking advantages of the, the properties of the minecraft universe and stuff like that and the only other thing that i have to show you which has two parts this is the northern gate and i'm going to really quickly cheat i'm gonna go up here and this is basically uh, the watchtower for the Northern Gate, or the, the watch platform, I should say. There's uh, a lot more platforms out there, but the way this works, obviously, is you've got yet another network of uh, redstone here. To open the door, you activate the switch. And as you can see, the doors are now open. And uh, this huge door is basically to allow big things like you saw those big huge logs that were being stored on the western side so basically that's why that is there so i'm not going to go all the way around and go into the stairwell just uh just know that um to get to this part of the thing uh the garrison uh, while you're in regular mode is basically there's a stairwell that goes up here and then you've got these uh, big, huge catwalks and also a stairway that goes to another barracks area. And then you've got kind of like a little watch area that you can like look outside and uh, you can eat your lunch here and make plans for the day and stuff like that. And then of course you can go up to the stairs to your other guard tower here. Uh, which is, I mean, we're not there yet. And you can see, we are here in the guard tower. And overlooking the west side of the garrison, uh, what, once again, you can signal, you can signal um, other people. Did that explode? Let me, let me try that again. Okay. It's a cloudy day and it's really unfortunate, but that's that's how that works, right? Uh, I think that's that's about it. Uh, let me try and see if there's anything more here, because uh, obviously that um, eh, I think the video has gone on long enough. Uh, I wanted to basically go around and make a couple more uh, announcements and everything like that. July is now upon us, which means that um, the first half of the year is done. And traditionally, I, I, I release kind of um, a uh, bulk album called The Master List. Often I name it other things other than The Master List, but I am in the process of putting together another bulk album that includes all the music tracks that I've done from uh, January 1st of this year to... Uh, to um, July 1st of this year. And so if you want a bulk master playlist of songs that you can download for $9, basically um, it'll be on iTunes sometimes this month. Um, I'm working as, as as fast as possible on that, but I've, I've had other things that I had to take care of and everything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour. It's it's, it's my little uh, home away from Minecraft, I guess. And uh, once again, thank you guys all for the support you've given me throughout the, uh, throughout the years. And, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.